Many things in life relate to each other, but what does physics and football have in common? How many attempts does that take? You lost count? Uh, yes. oh. So first question, what actually is a force? A dictionary will tell you that a force is any interaction that, when unopposed, will change the motion of an object. That's probably the, the quickest and easiest definition. But what does this mean practically? When I kick the ball, my foot applies a force on the ball. Since there are no other forces opposing it, the ball starts to move. But forces can also be used to slow down or even stop moving objects. If I pass the ball to my brother, he applies a force on the ball that acts in the opposite direction to its travel, which causes the ball to slow down and stop. The resultant force is the sum of all the forces acting on an object. Forces are known as vectors, which means they have both a size and a direction. If I take this object here, for instance, and I applied a force on this object in this direction, if at the same time I also applied another force with the same size as this force, but in the opposite direction, both forces would effectively cancel each other out. I mean, not literally an explosion. And there will be no resultant force. And so the object would neither speed up nor slow down. For instance, if my brother and I both kick the ball at the same time with the same amount of force, but in opposite directions, the ball just stays still because the resultant force is zero. Back to the original example, the only force acting on the ball, ignoring weights for now, is from my foot. And so the ball starts moving because there is a resultant force. There is a simple equation to describe this relationship. The resultant force of an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its acceleration, also known as Newton's second law. In other words, when there is a resultant force acting on an object, it accelerates, or in other words, changes speed. In our example, the ball initially has no speed, but in the end does, once a force is applied to it. Moreover, if we increase the force applied, the ball would change speed even more and move even faster. That's why in a real match, if you kick the ball harder, it travels faster. But wait, let us rewind. Before the ball is kicked, you may think that there are no other forces acting on the ball, but you'd be wrong. The weight of the ball acts downwards on the ball, pulling it towards the ground. But then you ask, so why isn't the ball moving towards the ground or accelerating towards the ground? That's because the ground, or the earth, is also applying an equal force on the ball, but in the opposite direction. These forces effectively cancel each other out, as we saw earlier, and so there is no resultant force, and so the ball stays completely still. This is the start of Newton's third law. Similarly, when I kick the ball, I exert a force on the ball, and it starts moving towards the goal. However, the ball also exerts an equal force on me, but in the opposite direction. And in this instance, causes my already moving leg to slow down. But there is still one final question to answer. Once the ball leaves my foot, the force from my foot no longer acts on the ball. So why does it keep moving? When the ball is travelling, no other forces are acting on it. And so the ball has no resultant force and therefore will continue to move at a constant speed. This is known as the inertia of an object and states that any still object or any moving object will stay still or continue to move at the same speed unless another force acts on that object. This is known as Newton's first law and all masses have inertia. 
And this explains why it can be hard to stop running when dribbling the ball or even start the run in the first place. However, if during the ball's journey it hit another object or the wind picked up and there was a resultant force acting on the ball, it would speed up or slow down, but hopefully not as unlucky as this.